Having a roof over our heads is incredibly important. But there are some among us who pay extra to have that roof removable. These are the people who love the wind in their hair, SPF on their faces, and sometimes, unfortunately, a sunburned bald spot. I'm talking about drop tops, rag tops, no tops, yes, convertibles. You might ask, where did these roofless wonders come from? Well, wonder no more. The Henry Ford Museum's Curator of Transportation, Matt Anderson, is climbing behind the wheel of a classic 1959 Cadillac Eldorado convertible. Turns out, though, that when the very first cars rolled off the assembly line, they were basically, well, convertibles. Pretty much every early car by default was a convertible. They were open air. A lot of the early ones didn't even have bodies and doors. Until the 1920s, you could buy a closed car with a wooden body, but typically it cost you more, sometimes quite a bit more than the open car. And as we go through the 20s, by the end of the decade, you actually start paying more for the open car than you do for the closed car. So it really is a, a total change. I joined Matt near another vintage convertible, a 56 Chevy Bel Air to learn why we have such a soft spot for soft tops. What made people interested in open top cars? We had a resurgence of convertibles after World War II. A lot of American GIs in Britain and in Europe saw little two-seat sports cars over there with open tops, and they came home, wanted something like that here. So really by the mid to late 1950s, you could get almost any type of car with a convertible top, right down to the, the lowliest compact. In the post-World War II convertible boom, Hard top versus soft top. You could get the traditional folding soft top, or you could get hard top convertibles, which are really some of the most interesting gadgets I think ever designed in the automotive industry. And this is a regular steel top that folds down and goes into the trunk. There was actually a third option that kind of fell between the foldable rag top and then the retractable hard top, and that was a removable hard top. It's essentially a one piece roof that you can just pick up and take right off the car. Of course, it came with its own drawbacks. You couldn't really remove it yourself. That's a youngest sibling job, <laughs> holding the one piece hard top. Barreling down a highway in a super sporty convertible like this may give you that heart pounding feeling of freedom. But is it really safe? Safety is a big issue, particularly by the late 1960s into the early 1970s. And needless to say, a uh, convertible soft top, even when it's up, doesn't provide the protection of a steel top in the event of a rollover accident. So safety concerns, as well as security concerns, those all kind of help to push the convertible out of the popularity it enjoyed before that. Where is a convertible right now in terms of its popularity? The convertible has made a bit of a comeback. You can buy them today, but not in the variety that you could 50 or 60 years ago. When I think about that hard top technology, I'm picturing an armadillo. Now, why do I think something called a Chevy armadillo wouldn't sell? <laughs> that, that would be a tough one, I think. 